Hello, my name is Jamie Westhoven with the City and County of Denver. In this video, I'll be talking about how owners of buildings covered by the Denver Building Performance Policy can apply for an adjustment to the compliance timeline for their buildings. There are certain events in a building's life cycle that may make it challenging to meet the compliance deadlines as assigned. If your building experiences one of the qualifying events listed on this slide, you can apply to adjust your building's compliance timeline. If your building qualifies as an equity priority building, you can also apply for an adjusted timeline to align with refinancing cycles or to accommodate other restrictions that limit timely access to capital. You can apply for a timeline adjustment that addresses just one target or multiple targets within a single application. To apply for a timeline adjustment, go to the Find a Form page or the Timeline Adjustment page on the program website. The application form will ask questions about the reason for the adjustment, justification for the delay, and details on renewable plans. I'll cover this more in the next few slides, but there are additional documents that are required in the submission. These include an energy audit that meets the minimum requirements and is submitted through the audit template tool, a written retrofit plan using the template we've provided, an operations and maintenance program document, an electrification feasibility report if natural gas equipment is present in the building, and any additional documentation that would help support your request. For example, if you're planning a major renovation, we expect to see the plans for that renovation as one of the supporting documents. Once you've completed the form and attached all the necessary documentation, click Submit to send your form to the city. You will receive an email confirmation that the form was successfully submitted. The city will review the information in your timeline adjustment application. And if needed, have a conversation with the building representatives to refine the plan or get clarification on items. The city will then create a timeline adjustment notice that contains the agreed upon timeline and due dates, interim and final targets, reporting requirements, and penalties that would be assessed if the plan is not completed as agreed. If a campus needs a timeline adjustment, or one is needed for a demolition that occurs within two years after a target due date, the process is slightly different, so please see the technical guidance for more information. Let's dive into the required documents needed for the timeline adjustment application. We'll start with the energy audit. The audit must follow ASHRAE Standard 211-2018, and be a level two audit. The energy auditor must be a third party and have one of the license or credentials listed on the screen. The energy audit should use calendar year 2019 as the baseline year and the energy data should be in weather normalized site EUI. The audit must have been completed no earlier than January 1st, 2020. If the audit was completed before that date and it meets these minimum requirements, then the energy use data and savings calculations will need to be updated to the 2019 baseline. Finally, the auditor's investment analysis needs to cover all existing equipment and list all of the energy conservation measures necessary to reach the building's 2030 site EUI target with cost and saving calculations for each of the individual measures and in total. Audit requirements are slightly different for buildings in a campus setting. Please see the technical guidance for more details on campus energy audits. As mentioned, once the audit is complete, it must be submitted through the audit template tool. The tool will create a PDF that will need to be uploaded with your timeline adjustment application. Denver has worked with the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory, or PNNL, to customize their audit template tool for Denver's building performance policy. 
Once your building's audit data is in the audit template, you can access the information in a number of U.S. Department of Energy tools to help you understand and better manage your building's energy use. Go to buildingdata.energy.gov to find more information on the Department of Energy's Building Energy Asset Score, Building Sync, and other tools that can help you get the most out of your energy audit data. Moving on to the retrofit plan. We've created a retrofit plan template that will need to be filled out and submitted with your timeline adjustment application. The Microsoft Word template can be found on the program website and in the technical guidance. The retrofit plan is intended to give the city a high level look into your compliance plans and should be a maximum of five pages. It must cover the following four items. First, the improvements you're going to perform to achieve the 2030 target. This should include operations and maintenance improvements, short-term and long-term actions, and the reasons that some energy efficiency measures recommended in the audit were not included in the plan. Second, the timing of the planned improvements and upgrades. Third, the plan should address how the improvements enable the building to meet the 2030 target. Lastly, the plan should propose dates for progress reporting and performance evaluation. As building owners are working through their compliance plans, the city wants to make sure they are considering what changes they may have to make to their operations and maintenance plans. When submitting your timeline adjustment application, you may need to update your operations and maintenance standard operating procedures so that it meets ASHRAE standard 100 2018, specifically the sections that are listed on this slide and include it with your submission. If your building does not currently have an O&M program, you can state that as part of your compliance plan, you'll create one that meets the minimum requirements. If you plan on upgrading or replacing natural gas or fossil fuel powered space or water heating equipment, or a unitary air conditioner or heat distribution equipment that distributes heat from a boiler, you may have to submit an electrification feasibility report that analyzes how that system might be replaced partially or fully with a heat pump. The template, instructions, and trainings on creating this report are available on the program website. Now I'll go into a few specific timeline adjustment reasons. As noted, planning for end of major equipment system life is a timeline adjustment reason. If you're pursuing this option, please refer to Appendix C, the service life chart, in the technical guidance to identify the maximum service life the city would consider by equipment type. This will help you determine the date you should be using in your retrofit plan. Another timeline adjustment reason is steam loop system limitations. If you're looking to get off of the steam loop but are waiting for system level decisions to be made, a timeline adjustment is available. To get a timeline adjustment for district steam loop limitations, the retrofit plan must show everything else that you plan to do in the building to make energy use reductions while waiting for decisions to be made regarding the steam loop. For the Energized Denver Building Performance Policy, energy service capacity constraints are a valid reason for timeline adjustments. For example, if you want to upgrade to heat pumps but you don't have enough electrical capacity and you're being told it would be extremely expensive to add the capacity, we don't want you to do that. If Excel Energy has informed you that they do not have capacity to serve your project, the city recommends that you request from the person that you had contact with at Excel Energy to, pro to provide answers to questions in an email template, which can be found on the program website on the timeline adjustment page. 
you may have to get further down the road on energy auditing and design before Excel can answer these questions. Timeline adjustments can be requested at any time, but the city is incentivizing earlier action. The possible future penalties for non-compliance are on a sliding scale based on when you submit the application. The longer you delay the submission, the possible future penalty levels increase. 